Here with UFC President Dana White, UFC 275 is coming up this weekend, and we are not in Singapore. We're in Las Vegas, obviously, in your private gym. Uh, are you make, you're not making it to Singapore for this one, right? You yeah, got some no. family stuff going it's on? It's my son's birthday. This is 21st, so, yeah, I'm, I'm missing this Singapore event. Yeah, that's but a big one. But I'll be in Austin next week. That's a big one. I got I to gotta imagine over the course of your kids' lives that you've missed some birthdays, but you can't miss your son's 21st. Yeah, no, I, to be honest with you, I've been there for a lot of stuff. I have been there for a lot of stuff, or... Where I've been very lucky is technology. Like their games and, and plays and stuff like that, yeah. we would stream live to me yeah. if I was on the road. Yeah. So I've been there for pretty much everything. So you, uh, you willing to share the, the plans? Your 20, son's 21st yeah, birthday? We, what are you guys doing? So he and I are going to gamble together for the first time tonight because he's 21. Um, and then uh, we're jumping on a plane and heading to Miami. Yeah. We're going to spend the weekend in Miami. How much are you looking forward to playing blackjack with you? Because we know how much you enjoy being in the casinos and playing blackjack. How much are you looking forward to doing it with your son? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I, this is something that I've been uh, waiting for for a long time. So I'm excited to, to, to hang with him tonight and play some cards. It's like when, when Griffey Sr. and Griffey Jr. played on the Mariners <laughs> together. You know, yeah, when Braun right. wants to play with Brawny yeah. on the court or That's something. That's funny. <laughs> funny and true, yes. He knows what he's doing, though, right? He's not going to be hitting when he should be standing. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. This is going to be his first real... You know what I mean? I, I, I think he's goofed around a little bit here and there. You know, um, he's down in San Diego going to school. But, uh, yeah, tonight's, tonight's going to be the real night. Tonight's <laughs> going to be the eye-opener for him. Uh, he's never seen anything like he's going to see tonight. $10 tables or $25 tables? We're in a private suite yeah. upstairs that has DJ, you know, um, uh, Every game in there, yeah. a bar, and yeah, it's, it's, this, this is a whole nother level. This is, this is something that very few people have ever seen, yeah, what he's going to see tonight. Sounds like a good time. What did you do for your 21st birthday? Nothing even remotely <laughs> close to that, that I can tell you. Um, I don't even remember. That, that's that's how, how uneventful my 21st birthday was. No. Well, we'll get to some fights here in a second, but honestly, i got to ask you one other question. We're on the Vegas theme. I have not seen on your Instagram... Lately, a photo of a cop car behind you pulled over on the side of the highway. I can't believe you just said that to me. You know what's crazy? I was flying to work the other day, and I was thinking, I haven't been pulled over in a very long time. Yeah. Very long time. I was it's funny you said that. I literally was just thinking of that a couple days ago. I was ago. starting to wonder if you learned your lesson, or if, did he lose his license? Is, he, <laughs> yeah, like, is his son driving him to, to work? That's or? hilarious. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I haven't lost my license yet, but it's probably coming yeah well you won't be at UFC 275 for a good reason obviously your son's birthday but a lot to talk about with UFC 275 and I think for me in the main event it does kind of start with Yuri um, obviously Glover like the story behind him winning the belt is insane it feels like the whole sport's happy for him Yuri is this guy who has a little bit of mystique about him you know it's not very usual that a guy in his third fight in the UFC is fighting for a championship I remember when Mick Maynard signed this this guy to the lightweight light heavyweight division he was telling me, you know, I'm really excited about that guy. What have you seen so far in Yuri, and why is he in this spot? Yeah, obviously, you know, how, how fast he's gotten to a title shot, and styles make fights. Um, obviously, Glover Teixeira has big power in his hands, knocked out plenty of people, but I would imagine that going into this fight, he's going to try to get this thing to the ground as fast as he can. And the big question is, you know, if Yuri starts letting loose on Glover, can, can Glover handle the, the, the punishment he, he's possibly going to take from him in the stand-up? And then the other big question is, can Yuri keep it on his feet if mm -hmm. Glover wants to take it to the ground? You'd have to assume Glover can get it there whenever he wants to, and when he does, can he stay out of his submissions or his ground and pound? I know, man. Isn't it funny how, how much this sport has evolved? But sometimes it is like that. Like, Glover has taken, he took down Jan Blahovich, took down Anthony Smith, Tiago Santos, like he's just very, very good at that. And Yuri is so dangerous on the feet. I feel like like this, we don't talk about striker versus grappler much in this sport it's anymore, but it's kind of like that. And it's, it's fun when, it, when it's like that. Yeah, you know what both guys want to do. A hundred percent. And, you know, Glover has been one of those guys. That's why Glover was so highly touted coming up. He had that knockout power stand up. He had a great chin and his ground game is unbelievable. And he can take anybody down at will. Yeah. Yeah. Co-main event, Valentina Shevchenko taking on Talia Santos. And what's interesting about this one, I mean, I feel like every time Valentina fights, it's kind of the same, it's kind of the same conversation. You know, how, what, what, is, what is her opponent going to do? She's just so dominant. The odds are actually, Santos is the, is the smallest underdog who has fought Valentina since Joanna, which 
should kind of tell you something because Vegas knows what they're talking about. Most As she should be. Yeah. That's my big problem with this fight. My only problem with this fight is people don't realize how dangerous Santos really is. Mm-hmm. Um, this, this girl has knocked out 10 other women. You know, you, you see all these women that, that have these fights now. They're so technical. They're so good. They're so whatever. But for a woman to have that one-punch knockout power, Santos has knocked out 10 women and submitted three. A lot of them in the first round. She is extremely dangerous, mm-hmm. and this is a very, very uh, tough fight for Valentina. And my, my whole thing is, if Valentina rips through her like she does everybody else, people are just going to be like, oh, well, of course, because... You know, no, not of course. If yeah. she does that on Saturday night, man, it's just... Valentina is already unbelievable, but if she can do that on Saturday, wow. You've you, obviously you've been around the sport forever. You've, you've been the, the, the president for, for many, many years, over two decades now. Um, when you're talking about dominant champs that kind of fall into the, what we're talking about, where it's almost like people, it, it's almost lose-lose. There's no win because yeah. if you beat them, then, then you, know, you were supposed to beat them anyway. A lot of times we see champions kind of, struggle with that pressure, struggle with that spotlight, struggle with the target on their back year after year after year. Valentina, to me, just because of her lifestyle, it's never going to happen to her. It's true. She's never going to have an off night. Like, well, it, does she remind you of anybody in that way? And, and she, she, you're right. And she doesn't. And, and, and unfortunately, I think she's one of those people that everybody will appreciate a lot more once she's gone. You'll re- we'll realize what we had when we had her. Um, but she's also so humble. Mm-hmm. She's such a humble, good person. Um, and she just, she's a straight killer, man. Mm-hmm. She shows up, does her job, does her dance, and then goes on and does tons of cool yeah. shit in her life. She's like one of the coolest human beings. If you look at her personal life and, and, and the stuff that she's into and what she does and the way that she fights, and um, she's one of the coolest human beings ever. Just exactly whatever she wants to do, yep. what makes her happy, that's what she's doing in life. It, she is. She's, she's an incredible person inside and outside the octagon. And then, of course, the third fight on the main card, Joanna young Jacek versus Zhang Wei Li. Um, you're a fight fan, at, at first and foremost. What are, what are you most excited about with this fight? Yeah, listen, I don't put the type of expectations on this rematch uh, based on the first fight. I mean, the first fight is one of the greatest fights ever in the history of combat sports, not just... UFC or MMA, it's one of the greatest fights ever. Um, so, so I don't put that kind of pressure on the rematch, but they're both the same people. So you got to imagine it's going to be damn good, and the winner will, will fight Carlos Barza for the title. So uh, more couldn't be at stake, and uh, I think it's going to be a fun fight. Looking beyond June, July feels like a really big month for, for the company, for the UFC. Yeah, it's going to be a good summer. I mean, the whole summer... Uh, It's going to be good. And then, just like it always happens every year, you have a great summer, and then as we lead into the fall and the end of the year, you know, it's it's like that's when all the real big fights Mm -hmm. end up happening. Mm -hmm. And it was like that in boxing, too. It seemed like all the big fights in the 90s would happen in November. Yeah. Is it because the big fights happen in November and then they almost need time to, like, reset themselves over the first half of the year? Not to say that there have been some great fights over the first half of the year. I think that's what happens. I think, you you know, you build up all these matches – throughout the year, and then it usually, you know, explodes at the end of the year, and, uh, and then, like you said, we reset and start over in January. What's on your mind when you think about the second half and sort of the storylines that we're kind of building up to? What, what are some of the ones that, that pop into your head? Well, first? you start looking at, at who's coming back. There's a possibility, um, you know, Usman's going to fight. He's coming off his hand injury. You got the possibility of John Jones fighting at heavyweight. You have the possibility of Connor coming back at the end of the year, early next year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so Israel Adesanya is fighting on International Fight Week, and then he wants to turn around and fight again. Yeah. So there should be a lot of fun fights. Yeah, in addition to Israel fighting. And then you got the, the winner of Whaley Zhang and Joanna taking on Carla. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In addition to... Uh... And you got Juliana <laughs> and Amanda. Yeah. Uh, the rematch. Yeah, and I want to talk about some of those in July specifically, because in addition to Israel... You going to let me finish this now? Sure. <laughs> Israel and Cannoneer... You got Volkanovski and Max Holloway, and that's a fight that I just I, I, I want right. to get, get your thoughts on that. Yeah. Because um, trilogies, sometimes, sometimes they're, they're huge, right? And everybody wants to see them. Sometimes people are like, oh, these guys are going to fight again. This one in particular is, is Volk won the first two, but I feel like, like this fight is still, 
it's rare in that the guy won the first two, but there's still, does it feel like unfinished business to you? And what do you think it feels like at stake in this fight? Yeah, I, th I think that this is one of those situations where Volkanovski ha has had um, a tough road and, and making people respect him and, and say, hey, just admit it. Yeah. I'm the guy. Yeah. Get over whatever hangups you have yeah. with me winning or whatever. Because, you know, you had some people saying, oh, I thought Max won this fight. Volkanovski's been on a tear. Mm -hmm. So, as close, listen, Max is one of the best ever, too. So, as close as those fights were, now you're starting to realize, okay, yeah. Volkanovski is, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. The, 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 he's the real thing. Yeah. So, now this, I think this is a great opportunity for, for Max to have another shot and, and erase any doubts that he ever had or whatever. And for Volkanovski to put the final pin in this thing and say, don't ever talk to me about Max Holloway again. And they both look so good, too. True. Like, like Max, the way he, he, obviously the way he fought Calvin Cater, but then yep. the great fight against Yair Rodriguez. And then, like you said, Alex is like, in order to make everyone be quiet about Mac, Max, he had to be special. And yep. he's been special. So it's just the tear that both of them have been on since. Yeah, I agree. It just, you know, there's times when people ask me, Oh, would you ever do three fights of this? And I'd be like, no, you yeah. don't need to do three fights. This is actually one of those fights <laughs> where you can make a lot of sense out of doing three fights with these two. Absolutely. And then on July 16th, you have a UFC on ABC, which is still a bit, you know, always a big deal for this company, be on network television. And I know that a lot of times the schedule and the matchup that's going to headline an ABC card, it re revolves around timing. But I'm going to take a, a phrase from you. It doesn't suck that you got Brian Ortega and Yair Rodriguez headlining an ABC card, right? I mean, did that one just kind of fall into place pretty perfectly for Yeah, we, we were trying to figure out, you know, what, what special fight we could put on ABC, and uh, all about timing. That one ended up working out perfectly, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, what, what a great headliner for, for, for the network. And then seven days later, in London again. Well, <laughs> after the last fight in London, and I just, I've been saying this in all the media that I've been doing, if you have never been to a fight in the UK, I'm telling you fans right now, book a, a summer trip to London, go hang out and kick around London, and you have to do one of these fights live. It's like nothing you've ever seen before. It's, it's so fun. It's so fun that we booked another fight even when we weren't planning on going back to England. So, and the card is great, so if, if you have the opportunity to go to London and you've never been, do it. I felt like that one in March almost caught you off guard with how good it was. Because we were talking about the atmosphere the whole time, and you were like, hey, you know, I'm there to watch the fights. Well, but then you actually saw it, and the atmosphere was... was yeah. It just... We went through COVID. We had no fans for a long time. Yeah. England's always great. You just forgot. And as you went back and, and, and started seeing live sports with fans again, you know, we've had 16 consecutive straight sellouts, mm -hmm. broke all the records, all this stuff. But then once we got back in London... Yeah. And the fans were absolutely rabid, and it was, it was, it was a special night. Yeah, it was insane. I, I'm going to put you on the spot here, but can you think of, it's almost like, like you just said, like go to London and experience a fight card in London. When ha, what comes to mind when you think of, in the past, cities that actually became the, the, the destination or part of the draw because the crowd was, was just so good? I mean, I guess what I'm asking is the best places that you can remember to watch a UFC fight. Yeah, well, it's true. As we start to... <laughs> As we start to get back to whatever normal is going to be again, um, you know, you got the UK, which is awesome. And, you know, whether it's London or Ireland, you know, it's, it's off the charts. Mm -hmm. Wait till we get back to Australia and do our first live event back in Australia. Yep. That'll be nuts. I believe that once we get back into Toronto, Toronto will be nuts when, when we do our first live event back there. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, th there's certain places that are just fun places to, 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 to see the shows. Yeah. And then July 30th in Dallas, UFC 277, you mentioned it already, Juliana Pena versus Manda Nunes. I just want to know as a fight fan, your biggest question is going into to that fight. Because obviously it was a huge upset. We know how high you, highly you think of Amanda Nunes. I mean, yep. one of your favorite fighters, I think, of yeah. all time, right? Yeah, I mean, no, it's The true. way you speak about her and some of the art around even the apex really you know, shows her, you, you, you are a big fan of what Amanda Nunes has done. Absolutely. What are some of the questions around this rematch between her and Pena? Yeah, it's fascinating the way that we went. First of all, if you look at my history with Juliana Pena, my kids were, my son's 21 today. They were little. They were little kids, and they were t in some jujitsu class uh, that was going on somewhere. And Juliana Pena walked up to me in the gym and said, hey, I wanted to meet you. I'm Juliana Pena, and I'm going to be your world champion someday. 
You know what I mean? So, you know, the, the history that I have with Juliana, the history that I have with Amanda, um, and who they both are as fighters. I mean, Juliana is a, is a woman who has believed in herself since day one and always knew that she was going to be a world champion and did it by beating Amanda Nunes, mm -hmm. which, is, which is absolutely crazy. Um, so the rematch should be fun, you know? The question is for Amanda, and this, this is what happens to all fighters. You know, you know the, the big narrative, we don't pay anybody. Amanda's rich. Mm -hmm. Amanda is a, is a multi-millionaire who is now at a completely different financial status. Mm -hmm. She has um, a baby now. Mm -hmm. You know, her, her life, she's not that hungry, savage she was, yeah. you know, when she started to, 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 to take this run at, 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 at becoming a world champion. A lot of that factors in. And now Juliana's at a place where she beat her Juliana's starting to see a lot of the things that come along with being the world champion now. Mm -hmm. You know, financially, um, popularity, when you, as, you, as you get out in the world and start doing it. That, that belt is the key that opens a lot of doors. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm sure she wants to get to that Amanda Nunes level financially and everything else. So all that stuff factors into the fight. Yeah. And, and those are all questions I can't answer. And maybe, yeah, maybe you can answer this because I don't know how much time you've been around her, but obviously she was in Vegas and she filmed The Ultimate Fighter. Have you seen anything out of Amanda that makes you think that, that despite all that stuff and that her career is good, like she didn't like losing to that woman on that night? Like, have you seen kind of... Well, I, I haven't seen it, but I do know that she does not like Juliana. Yeah. Thinks Juliana has a big mouth and yeah. all that other stuff. Um, and, 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 you know, for her, that would have to be her motivation mm -hmm. is you know, to, to, to beat Juliana because she doesn't like her. Mm -hmm. Because for all the other reasons, Amanda doesn't need to yeah. win the fight. Yeah, yeah. I got two more I want to ask you about. I, I interviewed Habib not that long ago, and he said that for the first time ever since he's known you, you didn't respond to a text message that he sent you. Did you hear about this? No. He said that he texted you, Dana, Islam Makachev has to be the next number one contender. <laughs> It's a 10-fight win streak, 11-fight win streak. It's the only fight to make. There's no other fight you can make. And he said that he saw that you, a little red message came up, and you didn't respond. It was the first time ever in oh, the history. Oh, so, so what he's saying is I read the message, but I didn't respond That's to it. That's what he's saying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was nothing personal. It was nothing, uh, yeah. I, I got him and Ali all over me about Islam. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And what are you telling him? Is there any answer yet? There's no answer, no. no. Uh, you know, I, I wanted to do that fight with him and... Uh, um, Benil yes, Darius. Yes, Benil Darius, yes. Yep. Okay, so we'll wait and see on that one. And then uh, this actually just came up today. Bilal Muhammad and Hamzat Shemaya. Obviously, Hamzat, everybody's interested in his, his next move. Bilal's been calling him out. Hamzat kind of responds to everybody who calls him out. He's just that kind of guy, you know? But he said, all right, Abu Dhabi in October. Is that a fight you're interested in? Or, or what, what are your plans with Hamzat? I don't know yet. Um, we're, we're still working on that. Um, but that's, that's, that's another one of those situations, too, where you see a guy who was hungrier than Hamzat Shemaev. Like, he wanted to fight every weekend. He wanted the 85-pound belt. He yep. wanted the 205-pound belt. He wanted the 70-pound belt. Three belts. fights in 10 days All, all this other wanted. stuff. Yeah, three, you know, <laughs> da, 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 da. And then you start making some money, man. And, mm. and, you know, all that stuff slows down. So... I don't know. We, we, got, we got to see what's next. I, I, I don't have anything for him yet. Okay. All right, man. Well, we really appreciate the time. Enjoy. Uh, man, I'm, I'm excited to hear how, you, how the 21st birthday goes. That Thanks, sounds, buddy. sounds like a lot, of time, a lot of fun. Enjoy the time with your family, and we will, uh, we'll see you at the next one. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.